Life simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, leave the rest to God. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Government is not a solution to our problem, government is the problem. Government does not solve problems, it subsidizes them. Government's view of the economy could be summed up in a few short phrases, if it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. If it stops moving, subsidize it. The problem is not that people are taxed too little, the problem is that government spends too much. We must never remain silent in the face of bigotry. We must condemn those who seek to divide us. In all quarters and at all times, we must teach tolerance and denounce racism, anti-Semitism and all ethnic or religious bigotry wherever they exist as unacceptable evils. We have no place for haters in America, none, whatsoever. It's not that liberals aren't smart, it's just that so much of what they know isn't so when a business or an individual spends more than it makes, it goes bankrupt. When government does it, it sends you the bill. And when government does it for 40 years, the bill comes in two ways, higher taxes and inflation. Make no mistake about it, inflation is a tax and not by accident. We must reject the idea that every time a law is broken, society is guilty rather than the lawbreaker. It is time to restore the American precept that each individual is accountable for his actions. Now back in 1927 an American socialist, Norman Thomas, six times candidate for president on the Socialist Party ticket, said the American people would never vote for socialism. But he said under the name of liberalism the American people will adopt every fragment of the socialist program. Freedom is a fragile thing and is never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by inheritance, it must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation, for it comes only once to a people. Those who have known freedom, and then lost it, have never known it again. Because you won't get gun control by disarming law-abiding citizens. There's only one way to get real gun control, disarm the thugs and the criminals, lock them up, and if you don't actually throw away the key, at least lose it for a long time. Remember that every government service, every offer of government financed security is paid for in the loss of personal freedom. In the days to come, whenever a voice is raised telling you to let the government do it, analyze very carefully to see whether the suggested service is worth the personal freedom which you must forego in return for such service. We could say the government spend like drunken sailors, but that would be unfair to drunken sailors because the sailors are spending their own money. Republicans believe every day is the 4th of July, but the Democrats believe every day is April 15th. If you serve a child a rotten hamburger in America, federal, state, and local agencies will investigate you, summon you, close you down, whatever. But if you provide a child with a rotten education, nothing happens, except that you're liable to be given more money to do it with. Well, we've discovered that money alone isn't the answer. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our constitution is a document in which we the people tell the government what it is allowed to do. We the people are free. To those who cite the First Amendment as reason for excluding God from more and more of our institutions and everyday life, may I just say, the First Amendment of the Constitution was not written to protect the people of this country from religious values, it was written to protect religious values from government tyranny. Nothing lasts longer than a temporary government program. The time has come to turn to God and reassert our trust in Him for the healing of America our country is in need of and ready for a spiritual renewal. The national democratic leadership is going so far left, they've left America. Don't let them bury the American dream in their graveyard of gloom and envy. I received a letter just before I left office from a man. I don't know why he chose to write it, but I'm glad he did. He wrote that you can go to live in France, but you can't become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Italy, but you can't become a German, an Italian. He went through Turkey, Greece, Japan, and other countries. But he said anyone, from any corner of the world, can come to live in the United States and become an American. I've always believed that a lot of the trouble in the world would disappear if we were talking to each other instead of about each other. 
Sometimes when I'm faced with an atheist, I am tempted to invite him to the greatest gourmet dinner that one could ever serve, and when we have finished eating that magnificent dinner, to ask him if he believes there's a cook. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem, government is the problem. From time to time we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. Well, if no one among us is capable of governing himself, then who among us has the capacity to govern someone else? All of us together, in and out of government, must bear the burden. One of the traditional methods of imposing statism or socialism on a people has been by way of medicine. It's very easy to disguise a medical program as a humanitarian project. Most people are a little reluctant to oppose anything that suggests medical care for people who possibly can't afford it. One of the traditional methods of imposing statism or socialism on a people has been by way of medicine. It's very easy to disguise a medical program as a humanitarian project. Most people are a little reluctant to oppose anything that suggests medical care for people who possibly can't afford it. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it, we will not surrender for it, now or ever. We are Americans. Socialists ignore the side of man that is the spirit. They can provide you shelter, fill your belly with bacon and beans, treat you when you're ill, all the things guaranteed to a prisoner or a slave. They don't understand that we also dream. Government is never more dangerous than when our desire to have it help us blinds us to its great power to harm us. You and I are told we must choose between a left or right, but I suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There is only an up or down. Up to man's age-old dream, the maximum of individual freedom consistent with order, or down to the ant heap of totalitarianism. Regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would sacrifice freedom for security have embarked on this downward path. It has been said that politics is the second oldest profession. I have learned that it bears a striking resemblance to the first. We're Americans, and we have a rendezvous with destiny. No people who have ever lived on this earth have fought harder, paid a higher price for freedom, or done more to advance the dignity of man than Americans. When government gets too big, freedom is lost. Government is supposed to be the servant. But when a government can tax the people with no limit or restraint on what the government can take, then the government has become the master. I hope we once again have reminded people that man is not free unless government is limited. There's a clear cause and effect here that is as neat and predictable as a law of physics, as government expands, liberty contracts. Anyone who seeks success or greatness should first forget about both and seek only the truth. The rest will follow. We in the United States, above all, must remember that lesson, for we were founded as a nation of openness to people of all beliefs. And so we must remain. Our very unity has been strengthened by our pluralism. We establish no religion in this country, we command no worship, we mandate no belief, nor will we ever. Church and state are, and must remain, separate. All are free to believe or not believe, all are free to practice a faith or not, and those who believe are free, and should be free, to speak of and act on their belief. I do not believe in taking away the right of the citizen for sporting, for hunting and so forth, or for home defense. But I do believe that an AK-47, a machine gun, is not a sporting weapon or needed for defense of a home. Two Soviets were talking to each other. And one of them asked, what's the difference between the Soviet Constitution and the United States Constitution? And the other one said, that's easy. The Soviet Constitution guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of gathering. The American Constitution guarantees freedom after speech and freedom after gathering. Freedom is the right to question and change the established way of doing things. 
It is the continuing revolution of the marketplace. It is the understanding that allows us to recognize shortcomings and seek solutions. It is the right to put forth an idea, scoffed at by the experts, and watch it catch fire among the people. It is the right to follow your dream, or stick to your conscience even if you're the only one in a sea of doubters. I'm not a politician by profession. I am a citizen who decided I had to be personally involved. There is no greater happiness for a man than approaching a door at the end of a day knowing someone on the other side of that door is waiting for the sound of his footsteps. Was communism invented by a politician or a scientist? Well, a politician. She said, that explains it. The scientist would have tried it on mice first. Government's view of the economy could be summed up in a few short phrases, if it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has a cost, it imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so too must we, in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. Illegal immigrants in considerable numbers have become productive members of our society and are a basic part of our workforce. Those who have established equities in the United States should be recognized and accorded legal status. At the same time, in so doing, we must not encourage illegal immigration. It's been written that the most sublime figure in American history was George Washington on his knees in the snow at Valley Forge. He personified a people who knew that it was not enough to depend on their own courage and goodness, that they must also seek help from God, their father and preserver. Where did we begin to lose sight of that noble beginning, of our conviction that standards of right and wrong do exist and must be lived up to? Do we really think that we can have it both ways, that God will protect us in a time of crisis even as we turn away from him in our day-to-day -day life? Our natural, inalienable rights are now considered to be a dispensation from government, and freedom has never been so fragile, so close to slipping from our grasp as it is at this moment. The one thing our founding fathers could not foresee, they were farmers, professional men, businessmen giving of their time and effort to an idea that became a country, was a nation governed by professional politicians who had an interest in getting re-elected. They probably envisioned a fellow serving a couple of hitches and then eagerly looking forward to getting back to the farm. Conservatives were brought up to hate deficits and justifiably so. We've long thought there are two things in Washington that are unbalanced, the budget and the liberals. There are many well-meaning people today who work at placing an economic floor beneath all of us so that no one shall exist below a certain level or standard of living, and certainly we don't quarrel with this. But look more closely, and you may find that all too often these well-meaning people are building a ceiling above which no one shall be permitted to climb, and between the two are pressing us all into conformity, into a mold of standardized mediocrity. Abraham Lincoln freed the black man. In many ways, Dr. King freed the white man. How did he accomplish this tremendous feat? Where others, white and black, preached hatred, he taught the principles of love and nonviolence. Do what's right and you'll please some of the people and astound the rest. A small nation, faced with the denial of its sovereignty, indeed, of its very existence, reminded us that the price of freedom is high but never so costly as the loss of freedom. Of the many influences that have shaped the United States into a distinctive nation and people, none may be said to be more fundamental and enduring than the Bible. We are forever indebted to those who have given their lives that we might be free. There are those, of course, who claim we must give up freedom in exchange for economic progress. Well, pardon me, but anyone trying to sell you that lying is no better than a three-card trick man. One thing becoming more clear every day is that freedom and progress go hand in hand. Throughout the developing world, people are rejecting socialism because they see that it doesn't empower people, it impoverishes them. It doesn't require expropriation or confiscation of private property or business to impose socialism on a people. What does it mean whether you hold the deed or the title to your business or property if the government holds the power of life and death over that business or property? 
There is no love like a mother's, she who carries the child that God knits in the womb, she who nourishes and guides, she who teaches and inspires, she who gives of her heart and soul and self for the good and the happiness of her children and her family. We don't have a trillion dollar debt because we haven't taxed enough, we have a trillion dollar debt because we spend too much. Republicans believe the best way to assure prosperity is to generate more jobs. The Democrats believe in more welfare. The NRA believes America's laws were made to be obeyed and that our constitutional liberties are just as important today as 200 years ago. And by the way, the Constitution does not say government shall decree the right to keep and bear arms. The Constitution says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I don't think any of us should forget that the security of America is our highest responsibility. Families cannot prosper and keep America strong if government becomes a Goliath that preys upon their wealth, usurps their rights, and crushes their spirit. The freedom of thought and action we Americans enjoy to date seems as natural as the air we breathe. But there is a danger we may take this freedom for granted. We must never forget it was bought for us at a great price. The brave and resourceful Americans whose sacrifices gained our independence and preserved it for more than 200 years against formidable foes have set an example of unflinching loyalty to the ideal of liberty and justice for all. In 1992, the federal government actually issued more work authorizations to immigrants and temporary foreign workers than the net number of new jobs created by our economy. Something is fundamentally wrong when we have millions of American citizens and legal residents begging for jobs, and yet we are admitting thousands and thousands of immigrants a year with virtually no consideration to our employment needs or their employment skills. I have seen the rise of fascism and communism. Both philosophies glorify the arbitrary power of the state. But both theories fail. Both deny those God-given liberties that are the inalienable right of each person on this planet. Indeed, they deny the existence of God. Preservation of our environment is not a liberal or conservative challenge, it's common sense. People are tired of wasteful government programs and welfare chiselers, and they are angry about the constant spiral of taxes and government regulations, arrogant bureaucrats, and public officials who think all of mankind's problems can be solved by throwing the taxpayers' dollars at them. I can't claim to know the words of all the national anthems in the world, but I don't know of any other that ends with a question and a challenge as ours does. Does that flag still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? That is what we must all ask. More than a decade ago, a Supreme Court decision literally wiped off the books of 50 state statutes protecting the rights of unborn children. Abortion on demand now takes the lives of up to 1.5 million unborn children a year. Human life legislation ending this tragedy will someday pass the Congress, and you and I must never rest until it does. Unless and until it can be proven that the unborn child is not a living entity, then its right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness must be protected. Let us be sure that those who come after will say of us in our time, that in our time we did everything that could be done. We finished the race, we kept them free, we kept the faith. Abraham Lincoln recognized that we could not survive as a free land when some men could decide that others were not fit to be free and should therefore be slaves. Likewise, we cannot survive as a free nation when some men decide that others are not fit to live and should be abandoned to abortion or infanticide. I know at times we feel that perhaps in our prayers we ask too much. Or possibly we feel something isn't important enough to be bothering God with it. Maybe we should let him decide these things. We owe this freedom of choice and action to those men and women in uniform who have served this nation and its interests in time of need. In particular, we are forever indebted to those who have given their lives that we might be free. Surround yourself with the best people you can find, delegate authority, and don't interfere as long as the policy you've decided upon is being carried out. I've spoken of the Shining City all my political life, but I don't know if I ever quite communicated what I saw when I said it. But in my mind it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace, a city with free ports that hummed with commerce and creativity. And if there had to be city walls, the walls had doors and the doors were open to anyone with the will and heart to get there. 
That's how I saw it, and see it still. Isn't it strange that? People build walls to keep an enemy out, and there's only one part of the world and one philosophy where they have to build walls to keep their people and it was leadership here at home that gave a strong American influence abroad, and the collapse of imperial communism. Great nations have responsibilities to lead, and we should always be cautious of those who would lower our profile, because they might just wind up lowering our flag. We've gone astray from first principles. We've lost sight of the rule that individual freedom and ingenuity are at the very core of everything that we've accomplished. Government's first duty is to protect the people, not run their lives. This is a matter of vital importance to the public safety. While we recognize that assault weapon legislation will not stop all assault weapon crime, statistics prove that we can dry up the supply of these guns, making them less accessible to criminals. I know that it is often difficult to stand up for one's beliefs when they are being harshly challenged. But as one who has seen many challenges over a long lifetime, I can assure you that personal faith and conviction are strengthened, not weakened, in adversity. Revenues should be increased not by increasing the tax rates on the individual, but by building a bigger economy for everybody. At the root of everything that we're trying to accomplish is the belief that America has a mission. We are a nation of freedom, living under God, believing all citizens must have the opportunity to grow, create wealth, and build a better life for those who follow. If we live up to those moral values, we can keep the American dream alive for our children and our grandchildren, and America will remain mankind's best hope. History comes and history goes, but principles endure, and ensure future generations will defend liberty not as a gift from government, but as a blessing from our Creator. If history teaches anything, it teaches that self-delusion in the face of unpleasant facts is folly. Thomas Jefferson once said, He said, we should never judge a president by his age, only by his works. And ever since he told me that, I've stopped worrying. There are those who say I've stopped working. Liberals are people who think that being tough on crime means longer suspended sentences. Public servants say, always with the best of intentions, what greater service we could render if only we had a little more money and a little more power. But the truth is that outside of its legitimate function, government does nothing as well or as economically as the private sector. An actor knows two important things, to be honest in what he is doing and to be in touch with the audience. That's not bad advice for a politician either. For us to ignore by an action the slaughter of American civilians and American soldiers, whether in nightclubs or airline terminals, is simply not in the American tradition. Self-defense is not only our right, it is our duty. Let the 4th of July always be a reminder that here in this land, for the first time, it was decided that man is born with certain God-given rights, that government is only a convenience created and managed by the people, with no powers of its own except those voluntarily granted to it by the people. We sometimes forget that great truth, and we never should. Happy 4th of July! There are only two things that the liberals don't understand, the things that change and the things that don't. We don't lump people by groups or special interests. And let me add, in the party of Lincoln there is no room for intolerance and not even a small corner for anti-Semitism or bigotry of any kind. Many people are welcome in our house, but not the bigots. <laughs>